guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer card game review. Today's game up at the tabletop is called Nutstash. And in the game Nutstash, it plays two to four players, it takes about 15 minutes to play, and as for ages, I would say seven, maybe eight and up. It's a pretty simple game to learn. And in the game Nutstash, what you're trying to do is stash nuts. You're gonna get stashes, you're gonna get nuts, we're gonna put them together, hide them, and protect them. There's predators that are gonna mess with you, and other players are also going to try to get your nuts and stashes before you. And how does that work? You flip over a card from the deck, you roll your die, and if you get the number of the associated card on your die, so if it's a six and you roll a six, you're gonna grab it as fast as you can, which means it's dexterity. When you grab the card, you put it in front of you, and then as you gather more cards, you're trying to add them together. Now remember, you want to stash as much as you can and make sure that the numbers are equivalent, because if you have any left over at the end of the game, they're likely to either get stolen or count as negative points toward you. You score points based on certain combinations of stashes plus nuts, and if you have the most points at the end, you're going to be the winner of the game. It is a game that plays one and, uh, sorry, two and three players in a competitive free-for-all, and with four players, you play on teams. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look down below at the game and then how to play. Then we'll come up and I'll let you know what I think about it. So here we have Nutstash and everything included in the game and the three or four different types of cards. This is the deck and there's two different types of cards in the deck for the most part. There's gonna be the nuts and the stashes. They're gonna be basically mixed together. You're gonna to have a die for each player and there's two different types of die for two different teams, whether I think it's squirrels and, and chipmunks or something like that, things that stash nuts. And then of course you're gonna have predators. Predators are in the deck and they can occasionally do some interesting things. But let's go ahead and discuss how a turn works first before I show you a little bit of play. If you want this 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 uh, nut here, you're gonna have to roll the die uh, and then get the exact number. And if you do that, you can take the card. And the same would be said for the stash, and you could take the card. However, when predators come out, everyone's just gonna roll once, and the player who gets the lowest is going to be the one that takes the card, in which case something bad will happen, whether it be this guy here, who's able to steal a, or uh, remove a nut from a player, or steal a nut, and this one here, which actually can destroy a stash from a player. So these are things that you kind of want to have other players uh, suffer and yourself gain. Take this cards, we'll go ahead and just shuffle them into the deck here really quick, and I will show you how it's played. In a two-player game, each player just gets one of these guys here. In a three-player, you just get three die, and nobody's on teams. And then in a four-player, everybody gets a die, and then the red people are on one team and the yellow are on the other team, and you're going to add your points together. I guess you could also play if you wanted to play separately. Everybody adds their own an individual, but with a team comes some interesting interactions. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and just show you a two-player game so you get an idea of how it functions, and uh, we'll start by just flipping over the top card of the deck. As soon as the card is flipped, players are going to roll their die until somebody gets that number. And basically, it's just going to be like this. This player got a six. He can take it, as long as this player didn't get it first, right? This cut player can now draw this card and place it, because the game is continuously going to be moving regardless of what player people are doing, moving around with stuff in their stashes. So they're going to once again keep rolling for that six. Now, he wants that six, because that six goes with that six stash, and once that happens, you can flip them over. So they're going to keep rolling. He got the six. He's going to pull this card, and then he can go ahead and stash them. Stash cards cannot be stolen or messed with, and because the six is equal to six, that works just fine. And then another card's gonna flip. There's another six card. Oh, he got it first, so he's gonna take it. And uh, once again, another card's gonna go over. Ooh, that's another good one. He's gonna steal that from that player, though, so that he doesn't get to stash like he did. Now, remember, though, at the end of the game, if he has this left over, it's gonna be negative points for him. And another card's gonna flip over, and you're gonna keep doing this and deciding. Now, let's say you have a card here that you don't want. If both players decide that they don't want it, they can simply roll once, and the player who hits the lowest number just simply is going to take the card. And the game is going to continue until this deck eventually runs out. And like I said previously, there's going to be certain cards in the deck that are predators, and predators are basically going to have you, uh, so if this one pops out here, everybody's going to do the same thing, roll, player with the lowest number is going to get it and choose to do something to a player. This one actually makes a player lose a nut. So in this case, it'd be better if this guy got it, and making this player lose this nut. And they just get discarded. And that's a basic idea idea of the game. Eventually you're just going to have a bunch of players with stash stuff, so I'll go ahead and just speed the game up a little bit and just show you what it's going to look like. And this player will get this one here, this player get this one here, and this player can have one and one, oh, one, uh, one, now it's two, Let's see if I get a three there, hide this one here. And okay, so that's that's good enough just to give you an idea of how scoring works in the game. So in the game, if this was what was left over, you have two cards, the two stashes here and one stash here. 
And you're gonna score based on certain ways. First of all, you're gonna score per nut. Um, uh, you're gonna score for the nuts in the stash, and you're gonna get bo bonus victory points in a certain, a few certain ways. If you get a six with a six, you get a bonus victory point. If you get a one with a one, you get a victory point. And otherwise, you're just gonna score for the nuts in here. So in this case, this is worth one plus a bonus of two, three minus one for having an extra one there, and that would give you two points. This one here is worth two. And then these are worth negative, so that'd be zero points, in which case this player would win. The last interesting thing about this game is, let's say, for instance, uh, this player had these cards left in his side of the field, and these were all stashed. The very end of the game, there's a free-for-all, and players can try and take whatever they want from other players and stash as quickly as possible before the game ends. So in this case, if this player went and grabbed these cards here at the very end of the game and hid them, he's now going to get bonus points instead of losing points. And these cards would just be left, because nobody's going to want to take either of these cards because they'll both get additional negative points. But otherwise, that's the basic idea for the game Nut Stash. Try and stash as many nuts as possible, and if you have the most points at the end, you win. All right, let's talk about it. So let's talk about Nut Stash. And in the game Nut Stash, it's basically a competitive free-for-all where you're pulling as much as you can unless you're playing four players in which you have a team. But the idea is pretty simple. You're rolling the die, you're trying to get the numbers that you need, and then you're trying to collect either stashes or nuts and hide them. The game is fun because people are doing a bunch of stuff all at once, whether people are trying to flip cards because somebody has taken one, people are flipping their cards over, people are organizing their stash, as well as the competitive free-for-all at the end where you're like trying to pull cards you want, you have to be careful because if you steal too much you might get negative points. There's an additional bonus point condition, which is if you have three nuts in a single stash you get a bonus point, and then the other two is if it's a one and a one or a six and a six, but otherwise it's just bonus points for each nut you have in a stash. And that's pretty much the idea of the game. It's very, very simple. It's a deck dexterity game that I haven't seen a lot of. In fact, I don't think I've seen any die rolling dexterity games that involve just trying and flipping over cards and rolling die, but it works very well. In fact, we play this game live on one of our Facebook streams. You can go ahead and check that out on our Facebook page, and you can see that we all had a lot of fun with the game. It's, it's good because it's really easy for young players to get into. It has enough strategy because you're basically choosing what cards you want, which ones you don't want. You're hoping that in the future, certain ones are going to be of value to you or others won't be, and then that competitive point pulling, you know, and protecting your cards as best as you can at the end has some interesting interactions. A couple things uh, for, to note for this game is one thing is if only one player wants a card, nobody else does. It just kind of lulls and that player just rolls until he gets it, which I think is kind of weird. I think they should interact something where it's like one player is sim simply able to either take the card or everybody rolls. And if it's the lowest, that player just gets it, whoever gets the lowest. Another thing to note is when you're rolling and let's say that uh, two specific players want it, two, two other people will just sit there and organize their stash. So certain times there's little weird moments in the game where stuff just doesn't happen the way you're kind of hoping that the game continuously goes crazy and crazy. There's just little points where you're like, wait, what? And then this is Predators, which are fun as well. It's an enjoyable little game. It's got cute little uh, artwork. It's got, it's got some really cute artwork on it, basically showing you all the different ways the nuts are going to be stashed. You're playing as squirrels and chipmunks and whatnot, stashing nuts. So it, it works just fine. It's great for a little kid game. If you're interested in quick little dexterity games, you're going to dig this one. If you like the basic die rollers, for those of you who want something a little deeper, a little thicker, it's probably not going to be for you. And I think that's pretty much the idea of it all in, in a nutshell. <laughs> if you're interested in taking a look at Nut Stash, go ahead and take a look down below in the description a quick little dexterity game for a younger audience who's into doing a little bit of math and a little bit of calculations as well as a little bit of luck and dexterity.